It is the destination for people of this region uh, to come to see the major Broadway touring shows. People can actually experience what it was like to come here to see a movie with the Mighty Worlds they're playing. Literally step back in time. My name is Tim Burns. I'm the technical director here at the Tennessee Theater. It was uh, in 1979. I had been at the Bijou for a while, and basically the business agent for the Stagehands Local said that, uh, hey, they're gonna open the Tennessee Theater. You want to uh, paint the screen? And I said, sure. So I showed up, uh, and it was a stagehand call that's lasted 43 years. Uh, one of my jobs here is I am the unofficial uh, historian here on staff at the Tennessee Theater and I guess I got that position because I've actually lived 44 percent of the theater's history right here so by default uh, I'm the historian. The original Burwell building was built in 1908. It was a thin long building and when they built the theater in 1928 uh, they demolished those two storefront buildings to uh, build the entrance and the grand lobby. Uh, when it was built in 1928, it was a million dollar theater. It was designed by the architectural firm of Graven and Mager, uh, the general contractors with George Fuller. They built the theater in a surprisingly short time uh, from the time they started digging in the dirt, November of 1927, and then the theater opened October 1st, 1928. The opening movie was Clara Bow, starring in the Fleet Sin, but they also had live entertainment uh, as part of the bill. Don Pedro and his Melody Boys uh, was the house band, and Gene Wilson presided on the Golden Voice Mighty Worlds of Pipe Organ. The original seating capacity here at the Tennessee Theater uh, was 1,996. The reason why they didn't go ahead and just add four more seats and make it an even 2,000 like they said it seated in the papers was because if they had, they would have gone into a higher insurance category and have been, the premiums would have been higher. Over the years, that seating capacity has been reduced. In 1966, there was a major remodeling done by Wilby Kinsey, who operated the theater at the time. And they kind of spread out the seats and reduced the seating capacity to 1,545. Today, after our $30 million restoration and expansion that was done in between 2003 and 2005, our current seating capacity is right at 1,600 people. Okay, the Tennessee Theater is often referred to as a movie palace, and the reason why is because the studios in Hollywood were actually the ones building these theaters. The Tennessee Theater was actually built by Paramount Studios, and what the studios wanted is that they wanted to transport the average person off of Main Street, USA, and once they opened, walked through the gilded doors, they were immediately transported into a palace of their very own. As you look at the Tennessee Theater, you can see several different kinds of styles and designs. Uh, the architects weren't trying to win any particular architectural awards, so they were free to just let their imaginations run wild. The Tennessee is predominantly Spanish, a combination of Spanish and Moorish, uh, but the chandeliers in the Grand Lobby are French, so it's just a, a fantasy world uh, of make-believe. And it's interesting to watch people come into the Tennessee Theater today for the first time. You can always spot the first-timers when they walk through the door because uh, their mouths drop open and their eyes go up, and it's, I think that's a tribute to Graven and Mager, the original architects, 94 years ago. Around the middle of this, the 20th century, these buildings started to be, sort of fall out of fashion, number one. And then number two, they stopped making economic sense. Huge rooms with huge screens. When a lot of other movie theaters around uh, the country were being built as twins or even more screens. So this theater fell on hard times I'm in the 1970s, closed in 1977. Private owner bought it in 1981. Their company owned the theater for about 15 years and they did some renovations on it at that time, but it still was not suitable as a performance venue, even though it was being used as a performance venue. The stage was too small, the load-in was horrible, there were no elevators, there was no, uh, not enough public bathrooms, so just really underutilized in that time period. So in 1996, 
uh, the nonprofit foundation was formed and that board of directors, that leadership decided, okay, we're going to preserve this building and we're going to renovate it in a way that makes it a more functional performing arts venue that will serve the arts community and the greater Knoxville community much, much better than it can now. We were closed for 19 months during a very comprehensive uh, renovation and restoration. Everything in front of the curtain uh, was restored back to its original grandeur and its beauty. All the architectural details, the decor was all 100% restored. And then everything behind the curtain, the stage and all the backstage areas, the dressing rooms, that was all brought up to 21st century modern technical theatrical standards so that the theater could host and present much more elaborate productions. People are very um, almost possessive of it in the sense of, you know, this is our theater. So it's, it's really heartwarming to, to be able to present um, arts and entertainment in a way that people feel really attached to. And not only do they enjoy and appreciate the art on the stage, but they appreciate the space itself that it's taking place in. The Tennessee Theater obviously is a very important part of my life. Uh, I've spent most of my life here and uh, people ask me, do you ever get tired of looking at it? And the answer is no. I can still look out there at the auditorium and I still stare at it and I'm still amazed of what the architects created 94 years ago. It's a magical place and no, you never can get tired of it.